Good afternoon. Please welcome the Honorable Dwight Ball, Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, Elizabeth Day, Clerk of the Executive Council, and the recipients of the Public Service Award of Excellence. We've been enjoying the music uh, provided by pianist Len Penton. Please join me in thanking him for sharing his talents this afternoon. Before we begin the presentation, as you are able, please rise for the singing of the Ode to Newfoundland. pine clad hills and summer spreads her hand when silvern voices tune thy rills we love thee smiling land we smiling land as loved our fathers so we love where once they stood we stand their prayer we raise to heaven above god guard the newfoundland God guard thee, God guard thee, God guard thee, new found land. Please be seated. Good afternoon, Premier Ball, Ms. Day, honorable ministers, members of the House of Assembly, colleagues, families, friends, and award recipients. A special thank you to Selection Committee Chair Justice Alphonsus Fowler, uh, who is in attendance with us today. Welcome to the 18th Public Service Award of Excellence Ceremony. My name is Jennifer Mercer, and I'm the Deputy Minister of Justice and Public Safety. I would also like to welcome those who are watching this ceremony online as, as it is being live streamed. Before we begin, I'd like uh, everyone to ensure their cell phone ringers are turned off, please and thank you. The Public Service Award of Ex Excellence is the highest honor an employee can receive from the government of Newfoundland and Labrador, and I am pleased to be part of this prestigious event. Each recipient of the Public Service Award of Excellence will receive a glass trophy, a framed certificate, and a pin. The Honorable Dwight Ball, Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, and Elizabeth Day, Clerk of the Executive Council, will present the serv Public Service Awards of Excellence. I invite the Premier to share his opening remarks. Thank you, Jennifer. Well, what a privilege to be here today to recognize the recipients of this year's Public Service Awards of Excellence. And thank you for coming out and sharing this ceremony with us. We have four individuals and one team that's being acknowledged here today. All of you are more than deserving of this recognition. I appreciate the opportunity on behalf of the government of Newfoundland and Labrador to say a few words. Now as Premier, I'm fortunate to witness many positive changes in Newfoundland and Labrador and within the public service. If there's one commonality that we all share is that we strive to make this province the best place to live, to work, and to raise our families. 
The positive changes that are being created together, well, they include better services, better programs that people in Newfoundland and Labrador rely on. They rely on those services for health care, for safety, and for well-being. The same services and programs that are being highlighted here today because of the remarkable public service employees who design, sometimes implement, and sometimes administer them. Today's recipients represent a broad section of the many career paths of public service employees. We have Ms. Carey and her dedication to social work and efforts at Willow House and Cornerbrook. Ms. Duke in the area of child, youth, and family service. Ms. Fry for her decades of experience in administration and health and community services. Mr. Grandy in his many executive roles and his leadership related to the public-private partnership delivery for infrastructure projects in our province. And the police officers and crime analysts of the Intimate Partner Violence Unit, whose work is combating violence and your changing lives of people in our province. Now all of you are leaders and role models who exemplify a strong and vibrant public service. Not often do I quote a pope, but it was a Pope Francis who once said of public service that every woman, every man who has to take up the service of government must ask themselves two questions. Do I love my people in order to serve them better? Am I humble or do I listen to everybody to the diverse opinions in order to choose the best path. If you don't ask those questions, your governance will not be good. After reading about this year's winners of Public Service Awards of Excellence, as well as the others who were nominated, I am very confident that you all ask yourselves those questions in some form or another. Two common themes I have noticed are the ones of cooperation and willingness to listen to different viewpoints. All with the goal of ensuring that your work that you do and the services that you provide improve the lives of your fellow Newfoundlanders and Labradorians and often the colleagues that you work with. Our province is seeing demographic, technological, social and economic changes at an unprecedented rate. With those changes come new expectations from the people that we all serve. The people that we serve, they demand that government services are delivered successfully. Now there's one thing that I see every day in the work of public service employees. That's how you view your careers and your roles as more than simply a job. It's your passion. I see your passion, I see your enthusiasm towards helping residents. I see your determination towards improving all the lives of people around you. You are adaptable, you're responsive, you're undoubtedly hardworking. And it is true of so many of the 47,000 of our public service employees that are spread throughout every nook and cranny of Newfoundland and Labrador. So once again, congratulations for, for you being recognized by your colleagues this year. You do a remarkable job. You have done great work, and I know you will continue to do great work for the people of our province. So I'll finish up by saying that I encourage all the public sector workers that are here today to think about nominating a deserving individual or maybe a team for next year's Public Service Awards of Excellence. Thank you once again, and congratulations. Thank you, Premier Ball. For the ceremony, award recipients will come forward to the stage, and I will read a citation outlining the recipient's exceptional contribution to the public service. 
to receive the Public Service Award of Excellence presented to individuals and teams who through exceptional work performance have demonstrated excellence in public service, Jacqueline Carey. Jacqueline was nominated by Leo Blanchard. Jacqueline Carey is a social worker with the Western Regional Office of the Newfoundland and Labrador Housing Corporation. She not only supports the Western region through her work, but also through being a very active volunteer. Jacqueline leads by example, taking on every task with which she is faced. Patient, hardworking, and caring are just a few of the words her colleagues use to describe her. Her work with Willow House has been Jacqueline's most outstanding accomplishment to date. This domestic violence shelter for women and children is a tremendous asset to the citizens of Cornerbrook who find themselves in crisis. Jacqueline played a key role in making Willow House a reality. She oversaw all stages of development of the $1.8 million project through the initial application for funding to the creation of a master plan and building plans, to the purchasing of furniture and the hiring of staff. Because of her efforts in 2018-19, 150 women and 24 children were provided shelter, food and basic necessities at Willow House. Jacqueline has worked hard building strong networks in order to best serve the various community groups she's involved with. By creating these networks, she has fostered an environment in which everyone can work together effectively and efficiently in order to better serve those in need. She's a strong leader with a great attitude. Her commitment to her work, as well as to the people of her community, is inspiring to everyone around her. To receive the Public Service Award of Excellence presented to individuals and teams who through exceptional work performance have demonstrated excellence in public service, Jacqueline Carey. To receive the Public Service Award of Excellence presented to individuals and teams who through exceptional work performance have demonstrated excellence in public service, Bernadette Duke. <laughs> Bernadette was nominated by Edith Minty. Bernadette Duke spent over three decades employed in the field of social work primarily in the area of child welfare. She retired on July 31st, 2019, after a 34-year career <laughs> as a public service employee, dedicating her life to working with Newfoundland and Labrador's most vulnerable children and families. Bernadette's career has spanned many positions in areas such as foster care, residential services, child protection, youth services, and management. Teaching and mentoring social workers and students became a regular part of her career. She gave her time generously as a field instructor for Memorial University's School of Social Work and understood the value in developing the skills of newer employees. Bernadette was known as a modest and helpful supervisor who was the first one to offer help when needed. Through Bernadette's caring approach, she would often go above and beyond her professional requirements to arrange food hampers, Christmas presents, household items, and clothing for those in need. For many years, Bernadette worked with adolescents through the Waypoints program. In this role, she was instrumental in building the relationship between the foster care program 
and the Waypoints Agency. She worked diligently to inform policies and procedures to support these vulnerable young people and their families. She was open, engaging, and respectful, and advocated on their behalf. During her career, Bernadette worked with many external agencies and programs. Child, youth, and family services requires an interdisciplinary approach, and she collaborated with many over the years, including hospitals, police agencies, women's shelters, schools, lawyers, doctors, housing programs, mental health professionals, and foster parents. Those who've worked with Bernadette throughout her career hold her in high regard due to her collaborative, professional approach and easygoing demeanor. To receive the Public Service Award of Excellence presented to individuals and teams who through exceptional work, performance, have demonstrated excellence in public service, Bernadette Duke. to receive the Public Service Award of Excellence presented to individuals and teams who through exceptional work performance have demonstrated excellence in public service, Connie Fry. Connie was nominated by Andrew Wells and has a fan club. <laughs> Connie Fry was wor has worked in public service for 36 years. Having started with Medical Care Plan in 1983, throughout her career she has provided administrative support to multiple levels of management, including directors, deputy ministers, and ministers. Connie continues to thrive in a highly confidential and fast-paced environment by providing meticulous support to two assistant deputy ministers in a very busy and demanding office. During her years of experience, Connie has mentored students and new employees. Connie leads by example, contributing to a departmental culture of high standards and hard work. She is reliable, consistent, has exceptional attention to detail, and has become an integral part of the health and community services team. Her actions also exemplify what it takes to live a healthy lifestyle. Connie's daily walks are well known within the department, <laughs> a ritual that she carries out regardless of the weather. Connie maintains an extensive network of contacts and an encyclopedic knowledge of committees, files, and issues in order to provide the support needed. She reacts quickly and professionally to ever-changing priorities and urgent issues. Connie's coworkers and managers have described her as compassionate, conscientious, diligent, caring, pleasant, polite, and energetic. She embodies everything that a public service employee should be. To receive the Public Service Award of Excellence presented to individuals and teams who through exceptional work performance have demonstrated excellence in public service, Connie Fry. to receive the Public Service Award of Excellence presented to individuals and teams who through exceptional work performance 
have demonstrated excellence in public service, Corey Grandy. Corey was nominated by Tracy King. As the Assistant Deputy Minister with the Department of Transportation and Works, Corey Grandy led the establishment of a public-private partnership delivery model for infrastructure projects in Newfoundland and Labrador. In accomplishing this, he oversaw the creation of a team that delivers successful procurement using this new method while building crucial consensus and collaboration with other partners. The work that Corey has done is transformational to the way the provincial government delivers critical projects and has led to the procurement of a new long-term care home and acute care hospital in Cornerbrook, as well as new long-term care homes in the central region of the island. Other projects under development include the new adult mental health and addictions facility in St. John's and the replacement of Her Majesty's Penitentiary. All of these projects represent a significant and innovative means to invest in infrastructure that supports core public services and balances fiscal responsibility with the need to deliver better services. This sustained success would not have been possible without Corey's skills and perseverance. In recognition of Corey's leadership, he was invited to join the board of the Canadian Council for Public-Private Partnerships, a national, not-for-profit, nonpartisan, member-based organization with broad representation from across the public and private sectors. To receive the Public Service Award of Excellence, presented to individuals and teams who through exceptional work performance have demonstrated excellence in public service. Corey Grandy. to receive the Public Service Award of Excellence presented to individuals and teams who through exceptional work performance have demonstrated excellence in public service, the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary Intimate Partner Violence Unit, Constable Lindsay Dillon, Mullen Enstrom, and Constable Nadia Churchill. Constable Churchill uh, is unable to be here today as she's attending the National Police and Peace Officers Memorial in Ottawa. The Intimate Partner Violence Unit was nominated by Chief Joseph Boland. The Royal Newfoundland Constabulary Intimate Partner Violence Unit is a small but dedicated team committed to reducing intimate partner violence through early identification, mitigation and intervention, and building trusting relationships with victims and communities throughout the Northeast Avalon, Cornerbrook, and Labrador West. Constable Lindsay Dillon, Constable Nadia Churchill, and Ms. Mullen Enstrom are demonstrating what the RNC commitment to building safe and healthy communities together truly means. Their service delivery excellence is based on a person-centered approach to reaching victims and survivors of intimate partner violence through engagement and building trust. The Intimate Partner Violence Unit excels at establishing and maintaining collaborative relationships with community partners, and they're helping to eradicate barriers for people experiencing this form of violence through implementing innovative initiatives. The unit also builds capacity amongst officers and community stakeholders through developing and delivering training focused on victim safety and sensitivity. 
In addition to the direct benefits the work of the Intimate Partner Violence Unit is having on victims and survivors, the unit has also positively impacted the RNC overall by facilitating and encouraging a victim-centered, trauma-informed approach for all officers. The unit reinforces the message of the importance of recognizing the power imbalances between partners in a relationship and the dynamics that exist which perpetrate, perpetuate the cycle of violence. Several innovative initiatives that support victims and survivors of intimate partner violence unit uh, and those experiencing intimate partner violence are the Pet Safekeeping Program, which provides emergency shelter for pets belonging to, the, to victims with the intention of reducing barriers for people leaving violent relationships. The Lock Exchange Program, which installs replacement locks at the homes of women who are in need due to fear of violence and the cell phone program which provides mobile phones to survivors of intimate partner violence who have had their phone damaged or stolen and are in need of one. The intimate partner violence unit's person-centered approach is helping victims feel respected, heard, and safe. The trust that is being built by the unit throughout the community helps build public confidence in policing. To receive the Public Service Award of Excellence, presented to individuals and teams who through exceptional work performance have def demonstrated excellence in public service, the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary Intimate Partner Violence Unit. Congratulations to all of the award recipients. I would now like to introduce Elizabeth Day, Clerk of the Executive Council, to offer closing remarks. Good afternoon. It is my pleasure to join with Premier Ball, fellow employees, and guests as we honor this year's recipients of the Public Service Award of Excellence. I would like to thank Ms. Jennifer Mercer for emceeing today's ceremony and the selection committee for their comprehensive review of the nominations and thoughtful decisions in choosing this year's recipients. Having started my career 35 years ago as a frontline social worker, I have had many diverse and rewarding experiences working in the provincial public service. Throughout my career, I have been fortunate to work with and learn from many outstanding leaders across multiple departments and in many programs and services. The remarkable achievements and qualities of those who have received awards today remind me of the exceptional attributes of those colleagues who positively impacted my career and inspired me to be a long-serving public service employee. Not as long as Connie, but I'm getting there. <laughs> In that regard, you should never underestimate the impact your mentoring, leadership, determination, specialized knowledge, and strong work ethic is having on those around you. Your colleagues have noticed it, and you should be proud of your accomplishments, just as we are proud of you. As noted by Ms. Mercer, the Public Service Award of Excellence is the highest award given by the government of Newfoundland and Labrador to its employees. It is clear from the summarized citations that we have heard here today, and please know the citations as read today are indeed summaries. 
of the very detailed and numerous letters of support received in relation to the outstanding work of today's award recipients. Jacqueline, Bernadette, Connie, Corey, Nadia, Lindsay, and Mullen. You all stand out as exemplary public service employees. I have reviewed with keen interest all the materials submitted by your peers, and I fully agree that you are deserving of the merit inherent in this prestigious award. Celebrate your Public Service Award of Excellence. You have earned it. And on a final note, as mentioned by the Premier, please promote the award and what it stands for in your workplace when you can. Thank you. Thank you. We would like to thank the coaches, as Betty said, in each department who helped promote and support the Award of Excellence nomination process. Their role is key to the success of the awards program each year. To those who took the time to prepare nominations, recognizing the accomplishments of your peers, we say thank you. We also extend thanks to the selection committee for their thorough consideration of the nominations. The committee consists of persons familiar with, but at arm's length, from the public service. They review the nominations and recommend individuals and teams to be recognized. This year's selection committee included Mr. Justice Bauer, Paula Burt, Dennis Mahoney, Mary Shortle, Kathy Duke, Bruce Hollett, and Pierre Tor Tobin. We must also acknowledge and thank the members of the planning committee who are instrumental each year in the management of the nomination process and the planning of the ceremony, as well as our colleagues with the Department of Transportation and Works, uh, the House of Assembly Broadcast Center and the Arts and Culture Center for their support today. Thank you to our interpreters, Sheila Keats and Heather Crane. And last, but certainly not least, we offer our sincere congratulations to the recipients of the Award of Excellence. And we extend our thanks to you for your outstanding commitment to the public service of Newfoundland and Labrador. Please give them a round of applause. As we close the formal part of the ceremony, I invite you to join our recipients here in the lobby of Confederation Building for a reception. As you are able, please rise for the singing of O Canada. O Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all of us command with glowing hearts we see thee rise the true north strong and free from far and wide O Canada we stand on guard for thee God, keep our land glorious and free. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. those back to you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Try the shredder.